Hello everyone, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, we'll be looking at what happens when you run out of Midjourney's fast time included with your subscription, but still want to continue using fast mode after that. The very short answer is that it costs $4 per 60 minutes of render time, as you can see from the screenshot. You can buy more fast minutes for $4 per 60 minutes by turning on metered incremental billing. And this is what we're going to do. But in case that doesn't give you a clearer idea of the actual amount of images you can produce with it, then this video will address exactly that. We'll look at a breakdown of approximately how much Midjourney charges you per image rather than $4 per 60 minutes, as I believe this may be a slightly confusing metric for beginners. The reason why fast rendering incurs extra fees is that when you render images, that costs Midjourney money, as they need to use GPU graphics processing units to generate and render your images. Each image generation requires a different amount of GPU usage, depending on the complexity and quality of your images. That being said, do keep in mind that the costs you'll see in this video may vary from the costs you will incur when using fast hours. This video is my attempt to derive a cost per image metric with Midjourney and your cost per image may be different depending on the prompts, quality, aspect ratio, amongst other things. Let's begin by looking at what exactly happens when your fast time hits zero. This morning I was working on creating the images for my next YouTube tutorial which is going to be focused on how to use the same seed command with Midjourney as I started getting hit with notifications warning me that I'm running out of fast hours. Uh, basically they said, just letting you know you have 0.02 hours of fast time remaining. I then run this final prompt above and once it was generated I received this message over here. You've run out of fast hours, you can now either enable incremental billing by setting a spending limit with a button below or enable relax mode and have your job take longer to complete. Please note, if the buttons below don't work, please type slash fast or slash relax and try again. So in my case, I'll be selecting a spending limit of $10 as I want to do some calculations on approximately how much it will cost me to use fast hours outside of my allowance. Your incremental billing spending limit has been set to $10 will warn you when you reach this limit. So let's try to now see with the info command and what is going to be displayed. Okay, so I don't necessarily have any fast time added to my fast time remaining info, but I assume as I start using fast mode, my costs are going to be displayed over here. So let's try a few prompts now. The first test I'm going to do, I'm going to be using the MJ test version. So I already have my prompt selected. I'm just going to hit enter and let's see how much that's going to cost. We now have our first result back and remember that this was MJ test and not MJ test photo or V3. And this was an initial grid. So from my understanding, initial grids should be a lot more expensive because it's the initial generation and creation of an idea. But let's see if the numbers confirm that. The first thing to notice is that where it only said fast before, now it says fast metered. So it's nice to know that I'm past my allowance included in my subscription. Looking at the numbers, it seems that this render cost us 11 cents. I'm going to run that two more times to get an average number and let's take a look at the results. So we ran our first prompt, but we'll actually be testing 15 different combinations displayed in this table. We'll test three mid-journey versions, MJ test, MJ test photo and MJ version three in combination with five different actions you can take creating an initial grid, re-rolling, upscaling, variations, and remasters, and run three generations on each for a more reliable cost per image metric in each combination. So for example, the prompt we just run is going to fold under this combination, MJ test and initial grid, so it's going to be right here, and we're going to run two more times, then take the average cost between the three images generated and the amount we paid for each. These are the results for our first combination, MJ test and initial grid. For all 15 different combinations, I'll present the same screenshots with the costs for each run. 
So for example, here we're looking at MJ test and initial grid and the info reports for each run or each image generation. I've calculated the cost we paid for each run by calculating the difference between this and this number. This is possible because after every image I generated, I ran an info report, the reports that you see here, and as such, all these info reports are in order, 7172, 7173, 7174, and this continues on to the next slides that you're about to see. At the top, I've calculated the average cost of the three runs for each combination, so the average of these three. We can also obtain the average time it took to produce each combination by subtracting these values. I'll include that average time in a table summary at the very end. I do think these render times accurately capture the average render time, as I tested this 60 word prompt in the orange box with words I don't even understand, those were some randomly generated words, and the time it took to render this prompt was in line with what we received as an average here, 0.03 hours. Now that you're able to read the screenshots, I'll present my results in a quick slideshow and follow up with a summary table including all the combinations and their respective cost per image and the average time each took to render. Enjoy and I'll speak again after these. In front of us we have our summary table. Before I begin, I do want to highlight that these numbers may not be 100% perfect and accurate, but they can give you somewhat of an idea about how much different combinations will cost you, on average at least, and how many images you're able to generate. At the top we have the average cost per image, and not surprisingly MJ Test Photo is the most expensive, closely followed by MJ Test, with V3 significantly cheaper across the board. This makes sense because MJ Test Photo and MJ Test are a lot more powerful than V3 and thus require more GPU usage. We can also notice that the initial grids and re-rolling are also a lot more expensive than upscaling and variations. This also makes sense as Midjourney would have to gather and combine all the resources required for the creation of your prompt and thus these actions require heavy usage in GPU. It's a similar case with re-rolling because there you're presented with four new ideas similar to your initial grid generation. On the other hand, upscaling and variations are not as GPU heavy as Midjourney has already developed the main image required to output your result and either has to slightly alter certain details or upscale the resolution. So what does all this mean for you? How many images are you able to produce? Well, this second table calculates that for you. It simply divides the $4 quoted for 60 minutes of render time by the average cost per image that we calculated above. And this gives you how many images you're able to produce with $4 spent for 60 minutes of render time. These numbers range from as low as 33 for the initial grid on the test photo to 200 variations with V3. Take a second to study these numbers. If you're still here watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.